So uh, this evening, uh, we are going to look at the uh, position paper on integral ecology. And uh, as we've done on the other five occasions, uh, we're going to unpack this position paper. And in doing so, it challenges us to reevaluate prior pre preconceptions, previous understandings, and unquestioned practices. And I've taken that directly from paragraph one of the position paper. So a reevaluate. Um, um, look at previous uh, understandings and unquestioned uh, practices. And then having done that, to integrate environmental su sustainability into every single strategic plan for mission development. We get that in paragraph six of the position paper E and evaluate communities, service projects and programs. We get that in six H. So it's, it's saying that this particular paper has a, a big impact on our personal lives and on our lives of mission. So I'm the introduction, I am saying I'm not a scientist, I'm not a technologist, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a climatologist, I'm not an environmentalist, I'm not an ecologist, and you can put all the ists onto it. But I become alert and attentive when I hear facts that come from studies or that are presented in Time magazine, or sometimes there's a highlight in uh, Facebook uh, tw and Twitter feeds. Uh, for example, the melting ice in Greenland. And I become curious. So I'm saying curiosity is very important in terms of beginning to understand what's in this paper. So as I mentioned there, uh, the melting ice uh, in Greenland, and this was on October 20th. And <clears throat> the massive Greenland uh, ice sheet shed a record amount of ice in 2019. And why? So, and when I'm experiencing some new thing, uh, and I ask, why is this happening? And just at the moment, we are having these terrible fires in California. And again, why? Become curious, why is this happening? Uh, this is California uh, at 10.55, 11 o'clock in the daytime, when smoke turned daylight into eerie twilight. And then I read in December 2019, in Asia Pacific, the climate crisis is happening now, not in the future. Toxic smog, shrouded Asian megacities, hundreds died in flooding and landslides, cyclones battered coastlines and bushfires, drought and deadly heat waves led to towns and cities almost running out of water. And you have the link there if you want to uh, check out um, uh, what was said there. And these are some of the pictures uh, that went uh, with that uh, news. Uh, some um, advocacy work going on in Chennai, uh, students in Bangalore out uh, in terms of the climate strike, uh, drought again in Chennai and what the land looks like and people trying to eke out uh, some water. And then we have the typhoons uh, uh, south of Manila. Uh, more advocacy and of course the forest fires uh, in uh, Australia uh, in 2019. Uh, they're in California uh, this year. So paragraph one, taking all that in, uh, paragraph one of the position paper says, we live in a time 
when science and technology offer reliable global insights. And I highlighted that word, reliable global insights about the interconnectedness of life and matter in all forms throughout the universe. And I think most of us have had our week of ICA and the pre-session focused on the universe story, love at the heart of the mystery. And this is the theology. But having the science and having the theology, we're also confronted by fake news or denial of what science and, and theology uh, teaches. People don't believe it. Uh, the, the church has changed. Uh, that was never meant. Uh, we should think of Adam and Eve in the garden. We're a long way from there. Uh, we have entered uh, into talking about the Big Bang and what that brought about. The universe story began to unfold. And the universe story unites science and the humanities in this dramatic exploration of the unfolding of the universe. Our place in that evolving uh, cosmos, cosmic story. And there's boundless possibilities for the future. So while the climate crisis is now, we're also saying there's boundless possibilities. And I believe our six position papers are our entry point into the cosmic journey. And that this paper on integral ecology is the starting point. So the position paper actually tells us that science and technology, sorry, I keep saying technology, theology, science and theology enriches our understanding of the world as a source of deep contemplation and sacred activity, calling us to the heart of what it means to be inclusive and reconciled in all ways with the whole. It challenges us to reevaluate our prior preconceptions, our previous understandings, our unquestioned practices. But the position paper uh, in paragraph two also tells us the earth is threatened. We, are wit we witness in our time an increasing ill-considered exploitation of nature. nature. And this came from Pope Paul VI. And ecological catastrophe. Uh, the UNFAO uh, is speaking about ecological catastrophe. Not only world peace, but the survival of life forms, human communities, and mineral resources. The earth itself is threatened by an irresponsible and inadequate relationship with our own planet and the universe. The position paper uh, in paragraph two tells us that we experience discord with the very air we breathe. Think of the smog in Asia Pacific, the smoke in, in, in California, the smoke in Australia, and the water we drink. These are among our, uh, and among our communities, these call for a response, consistent with our mission of reconciliation, which calls us to join together to bring forth a sustain sustainable global society founded on respect for nature, universal human rights, and that has been echoed in every session, rights-based, economic justice, and a culture of peace. 
And these four aspects are coming from, and I will look at it later, a, a document known as the Earth Charter. So I came across this graphic, uh, which I think is very scary, uh, which looks at how countries uh, will be with regard to water scarcity in 2040. Now, 2040 is only 20 years from now. And there is no country in the earth with an adequate supply of water. You can see the different shadings there from low at 10% up to extremely high 80%. And look at the colorings in your region. Uh, India and uh, uh, all around there is uh, high. Australia, high. Uh, the Philippines, Indonesia. This is scary. And you probably know more about it than I do. So we're just going to uh, take um, a pause, as it were, uh, and uh, I'm going to introduce a poll uh, to you. And this poll, uh, there's a, a number of questions. And uh, the questions ask you to choose one place where you take action to lessen the impact of climate change. Uh, there are six options. And I'm just asking you to pick one. And you have here a link. Uh, there's 101 ways to go about it. Um, and I am also sharing with you uh, St. Matthew's Green Team. Uh, they give us 50 easy ways to care for creation. These are just, uh, you can look at them later uh, and they're resources for you. And very recently, I came across this uh, diagram in terms of the ecological footprint. Again, uh, uh, the links are there. So uh, the poll uh, will be uh, put up now and you'll choose one place where you take action to lessen the impact of climate change. Is that uh, in your home? on the table, along the route, in your neighborhood, in your city, and within your community. And um, I think there's a sixth one on the poll, uh, within your community. So we launch the poll now. Okay, uh, it's just to uh, create awareness around, uh, it can be some kind of action at home, or it can be in the city or in your local community. Uh, so that's all I'm trying to do at that point. And uh, this graphic uh, maybe shows something of it. Uh, solving global warming is in the center and doing something. Uh, so like you can go out, you can plant trees, that's very much uh, in the community. Be a catalyst, uh, you know, be a leader. Um, you can eat less meat. Uh, obviously, uh, that's to do with the table. Um, you can buy local. That has to do with the community, but also the table. Uh, local fruits and vegetables uh, when they're in season. Uh, buy fresh, not frozen. Uh, so uh, you might not be uh, challenged with fresh and frozen as I would be here in the United States. Then in the home, it's all about energy. Um, and um, again, solar panels very much here. Um, I, you'll have to think about it yourself, uh, but uh, turning off switches, uh, keeping lights uh, low, using the right kind of light bulbs, etc. And then um, on the road uh, has to do with like using public transport, walking, cycling, uh, not flying as much. Well, COVID has put an end to the flying, and some of, of the uh, results uh, uh, in the early days of the COVID was that the uh, air pollution had gone down considerably and people were hearing the birds sing. Uh, so uh, you have all this uh, interconnectedness. We all have a role to play. Uh, so I just found that graphic helpful uh, in terms of that particular um, um, poll. Um, 
so the poll is seeking to raise awareness uh, to convert individual and communal behavior from ecological ignorance to environmental responsibility. And th these, I, I'm taking these words out of the paper, uh, the position paper as 6C, evaluating our uses of energy, technology, water, diet. How do we manage waste? How do we consume? And then for the birthers among us, how do we manage our economic investments? Do we look for the best profit and exploit children in child labor? Or do we look at ethical investment? And then what's our political uh, policy and our political activity? I'm just uh, referring there back to uh, the slide with the water shortage and scarcity. How can we manage our water supply uh, better such that the world will have water? And time is running out, but the crisis is now. Um, Teresa, I don't know, have we, are we able to launch the second poll? Uh, okay, can, can you just carry on a conversation for a little while? Okay. Let me see. Uh, uh, yes, I've got it on. Um, I'm, yes, I've got it on. Do you want me to, let me see. Um, but no, just a second. I'll, I'll walk through it first. Uh, the second poll has a number of questions. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, they're really multiple choice questions. And uh, the first one is saying, what is the Paris Agreement about? And you have a number, is it migration? Is it desertification, uh, biodiversity, women, climate change? What is it about? What is UNFCCC? I'm sure you thought you've heard everything uh, from the United Nations. Is it the United Nations Food and Canning Conservation Commission? The United Nations Fund for Carbon Conservation and Climate. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. We mentioned the Earth Charter. How many articles are in it? Is it 10, 13, 16, or 20? What is COP21? Is it cities of pride? Is it communities of power? Is it conference of parties? our commission on population. So uh, there, there either are uh, pick and choose, um, you know, we, we get the right answer um, um, uh, in the poll, uh, or the result of the poll, then I share the right answer. And if we can't manage the poll, uh, maybe people can take a shot at it and say, uh, uh, one B, uh, the Paris Agreement, that's number one. Uh, B uh, would be desert certification. And uh, number two, UNFCC. Oh, that, that's um, uh, B, the United Nations Fund for Carbon Conservation and Climate. And then three, uh, well, how many articles? 10, 13, 16, or 20? Uh, just give the number. And what is COP21? Oh, we're here. No, let me, I am not able to. Sorry about this. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it, Tracy. We won't be with it. So yeah. we'll, if you can manage the chat like you did the last time. Mm, okay. Shall and, we do, uh, yeah, shall we do question one first? So that, yes, um, yes. question yes. one first. Yes. What is the Paris Agreement about? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? Migration? desertification, biodiversity, women, climate change. Oh, wow. Everybody has put E, Winifred. E, marvelous. Yeah. Yes. yes. So the second one, uh, yes. UN, UNFCCC. What is that? Is it the Food and Canning Conservation Commission? Uh, the Fund for Carbon Conservation and Climate? are the Framework Convention on Climate Change. We've got a lot of Cs. Oh, We've that's... got a lot of Bs, some Bs. Okay. 
Um, at this stage, uh, C some is the B, correct one. Some B and Cs, yes. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Okay, uh, how many articles are in the Earth Charter? Okay, everyone, we've gone to question number three. Stop now, we've gone to question number three on the Earth Charter. Okay, we've got quite a number have said 16, which is C. Some have said D, which is, uh, and one has said 20. So there's a combination of 16 and 20. Okay, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait until I look at the next slide to see the answer there. One has said no 20. idea. <laughs> Okay, okay. I think it's 16. All right, okay. But we will check that. And then the last one, COP21. Uh, is that cities of pride? Is it communities of power, conference of parties, or commission on population? Okay, we have a combination of B, C, D. So it looks like it's, um, it's quite spread out. There's A as well. Uh, one has said no idea, so that's C, D, B, yes. How are the C's doing? Not bad, quite good. <laughs> okay, well, the C is correct, uh, it's the conference of parties. It's quite a lot of B's as well, Winifred. Okay, okay. Yes. It's the conference of parties is the correct answer there. So my apologies <laughs> everyone for this um, hiccup don't in worry, the polls, don't yes. Worry, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, the art the art charter is sixteen articles. I was right. <laughs> uh, so climate change, the UN framework convention on climate change, sixteen articles in the Earth Charter. COP twenty one is the conference of parties at their twenty first meeting of the UN F Triple C, um, which is the UN framework convention on climate change. So you see how things are linked. And um, what was the last question? Uh, uh, what is COP21? And COP21 uh, was the meeting where the Paris Agreement happened. So the, they're all interlinked. It's all about language. And it's part of it is becoming familiar with language. So I'll just very quickly take you through um, some short explanations on what we have covered there. Uh, so you've got an idea of the language. So the Paris Agreement is a landmark environmental accord adopted uh, by nearly every nation in 2015 to address climate change and its negative impacts. The agreement aims, aims to substantially reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. Now, we hear that term often, global greenhouse gas emissions, in an effort to limit the global temperature increase in this century to two degrees Celsius below pre-industrial levels, while pursuing means to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees. So ideally, they would prefer 1.5 degrees, but they're saying at least let us keep it below two in this century. So that's the Paris Agreement. Uh, the UN uh, FCCC, that's how they pronounce that. Um, I might have been four years and uh, maybe five years at the United Nations before I got to understand what they were talking about when they said UNFCCC, and it just uh, toppled off their tongues. So it stands for the Framework Convention on Climate Change, and it entered into force in March 1994. So it goes back um, 20 years or more, and 197 countries have ratified it. So this, in some senses, was the beginning of the push uh, towards um, trying to deal with the environment. And it happened after the Rio conference in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro in uh, Brazil. And the UNFCCC is also the parent treaty 
of another treaty that you might hear about, which is the Kyoto Protocol, which happened at COP3, the Conference of Parties in Japan. And I bring this up for a very specific reason, which I'll show you in the next slide. It, it was adopted in 1997, but only entered into force in 2005. So you see, uh, we can want things, but when something enters into force, meaning it becomes law, people are not anxious. But it did happen in 2005. And Note this, it commits industrialized countries. That's the USA, Australia, uh, Europe, uh, all the European countries and economies in transition to limit and reduce greenhouse gases uh, emissions in accord with agreed individual targets. And individual targets were set for each country uh, between 2008 and 12. And the goal was to have at least a 5% reduction. And if you're interested in following this, you can go to the website and you can see more at the United Nations at climate change. So the UNFCCC at COP21 hammered out the Paris Agreement. So you see all these things are linked. Uh, at its 21st uh, conference of parties, and it marked a historic turning point for the global climate action. The idea was to limit the global temperature rise by reducing greenhouse gas emissions, provide a framework for transparency, accountability, and achievement of more ambitious targets and mobilize support for climate change, mitigation, and adaptation in developing nations. So it, the, the Paris um, Agreement at COP21 did not focus totally on the industrialized countries. Uh, it was a global agreement, reduce greenhouse gases, put in a framework for transparency, accountability, and let's come together to mitigate climate change. Uh, that's what they were hoping for. Um, COP26 was, was due to take place in Glasgow this November uh, in 2020, but because of COVID, it has been postponed. And now um, uh, it is uh, scheduled instead for November 2021. Now, that to me is not good news, uh, that they weren't able to try and do something virtual uh, because it means that there's no monitoring, there's no evaluation, uh, people are doing what they like. On the other hand, maybe COVID is having its own impact and maybe we don't need it. There's different ways of looking at it. And then I just put in there like COP22 uh, was in Morocco, uh, COP23 in Bonn in Germany, COP24 in Poland, COP25 was in Madrid in December 2019, and the host country was Chile. So Chile uh, joined with Madrid uh, to host it. Uh, so that's just uh, some of the language um, around these uh, issues and how uh, one uh, set of words and phrases uh, feeds into another. Now, I want to just come back for a second to the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, the second period of commitment was scheduled to go from 2013 to 2020, and it hasn't entered into force yet. And on the 16th of June, it would need 140 uh, parties, uh, 144, 140 have deposited their instruments of acceptance, technical legal language saying, we agree to do this. But four more are needed by October 2nd of this year. And October 2nd is this week to have that enter into force and, and be upheld. And if they don't do it, then it doesn't enter into force. 
And then what happens to the whole issue of uh, dealing with the um, uh, with the air and the climate change and the gases that are emitted. While the protocol, uh, Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement both set out to address climate change, there are key differences. The Kyoto Protocol is legally binding. And that's why they won't, they're so slow to come forward and uh, deposit the instruments of acceptance. Uh, so it's, it's, it's legally binding uh, for developed countries only. And we resent that. Even though we are the cause of the huge um, degradation of the climate, we are the cause of it, the industrialized nations. The Paris Agreement requires all countries, rich, poor, developed, developing, whatever, to do their part to slash the greenhouse gas emissions. And to that end, greater flexibility is built into the Paris Agreement. Uh, no language is included on the commitments countries uh, should make. Nations can voluntarily uh, set up their own emission targets and they're called Nationally Determined Contributions, NDCs. And countries incur no penalty for falling short of these targets. But you might be interested in finding out what are your nationally determined uh, contributions uh, in terms of the Paris Agreement. And uh, the Paris Agreement uh, um, does require monitoring, report, uh, reporting, and reassessing of individual and collective country targets over time in an effort to move the world closer to the broader objectives of the deal. And the agreement set forth a requirement for countries to announce their next round of targets every five years. But as I said, unlike the Kyoto Protocol, which aimed for that objective, but didn't include a specific requirement to achieve it. So yes, we'll do something every five years, but nothing specific is laid down. So um, that's some of the technical stuff uh, that goes on in terms of addressing specifically the climate change. Now, I bring up two other conventions here uh, one is on biodiversity, and one is to combat uh, desertification. And I do that because today in Asia Pacific, but it'll be tomorrow in New York, and it's happening in New York, uh, we are at the end of a decade of biodiversity, which went from 2011 to 2020. Now, I only learned this in preparing uh, for this um, uh, webinar and in looking at the journal in terms of what's happening during the opening week of the General Assembly in New York. So while there are many local examples of success, biodiversity is declining globally at rates unprecedented, unprecedented in human history with growing impact on people and planet. And you're probably aware of that. Uh, certainly I would be aware of it in certain uh, Time magazine and certain other uh, papers and environmental programs that I would follow on television uh, that um, uh, biodiversity is declining. Recent assessment by the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystems Services, uh, the IPBES, it would take you a month to learn that such that you could say it without having it in front of you, concluded that species extinction rates are tens to hundreds of times higher now than historical averages. So this also is alarming. Uh, that's just uh, some of the uh, advertisement with regard to the Biodiversity Summit uh, with the heads of state uh, to raise awareness of the issue, uh, bring uh, to the attention of national governments. 
So have you heard anything about it in your media, in your press, uh, to address biodiversity loss and mainstream, mainstream biodiversity for sustainable development? And then all about harnessing science and technology and innovation and capacity building um, to access and benefit sharing financial and partnerships for biodiversity. So bringing all of these things together to see how can we reverse what's happening. And uh, this uh, was also shared. Uh, what does loss look like? Well, 75% of Earth's land surface has been significantly altered by human actions. 75%. And 66% of the ocean area is experiencing multiple impacts from people, including fisheries, pollution, and chemical changes from uh, acidification. Uh, that's just saying uh, it, it's taking place uh, on the 30th of September, uh, today, tomorrow. Um, and my challenge to you is, what is your government saying? Is that a place for you to begin to get interested? Because the heads of state are being asked to send their uh, virtual, their pre-recorded statement. And I'm sure they will be on the website. And if anybody is interested, just send me a line and I will have the link to you immediately so that you will know what your government is saying. So from that kind of technical um, um, presentation, I want to turn now in the last uh, few minutes uh, that we have, um, I want to turn to uh, looking at other aspects uh, uh, that are in the position paper. And I am going to uh, 6D, uh, which mentions the Earth Charter. Now, the Earth Charter was crafted by visionaries 20 years ago. They're celebrating 20 years this year. And it's a document with 16 principles that turn conscience into action. And if you remember, 2000 was the millennium. So uh, there was a big move on uh, in the year 2000 uh, when we moved into the new millennium uh, to turn conscience into action. So it seeks to inspire all people uh, and in all people a new sense of global interdependence and shared responsibility for the well-being of the whole human family, the greater community of life and future generations. So the whole human family, the greater community of life, all that biodiversity that we're losing, and to have a world for future generations, uh, for your children, uh, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. It is a vision of hope and a call to action. And of course, I strongly uh, recommend that you uh, uh, Google it and read it. Now, the uh, position paper quotes from the Earth Charter, and I put it in here because in some senses, it's the beginning of pulling all of our work that we've done over the last six months together. And it says, we see injustice when communities are being undermined and the benefits of development are not shared equitably. And I think that's what we spoke about in the uh, position paper on economic justice. We know that injustice, poverty, ignorance, and violent conflict are widespread and cause great suffering. So this is more, again, about the uh, unequitable uh, distribution of, of resources. The discord we experience with the very air we breathe, the water we drink, and among our communities calls for a response that is consistent with our mission of reconciliation and calls us to join together to bring forth a sustainable global society founded on respect for nature, universal human rights, economic justice, 
and a culture of peace. And I think this fits in very closely with all that we heard uh, during our ICA week. There are four pillars in the Earth Charter. Number one, uh, in the bottom there in the purple, respect and care for the community of life. Now that includes nature and creepy crawly things and animals and the fish and plants, uh, the community of life. That's one. And number two is ecological integrity. It's just above it. Number three is social and economic justice. And many of our papers, uh, position papers, are addressing those issues. And the fourth um, aspect is democracy, nonviolence, and peace. We don't actually have a paper on peace or on conflict. Uh, there are many organizations that do have. Uh, we seem to be more over here in the social and the economic. And of course, uh, our lens is the gender lens, looking for gender equality. So I wanted to just pick up uh, in terms of democracy, nonviolence, and peace, because I think we find this as the content of uh, goal 16, uh, the Sustainable Development Goal, looking for justice, uh, peace, and strong institutions. And our position paper on ecology in paragraph 6, uh, 6F, talks about advocate locally and internationally with positive movements. For example, the UNF, that should be triple C, not two Cs, it should be three Cs. Secondly, uh, 6G, engage in political action led by communities and groups. For example, indigenous groups and women. And 6J calls us to be politically active on such issues as trade, climate, practices of transnational corporations, military spending, national energy policies, sustainable use of water. Be politically active. And this is actually in our um, position paper uh, in terms of ecology. So advocate locally, internationally, engage in political action with groups, indigenous groups, you work with many of them, and in women's groups, and be politically active around these bigger issues. But you can't do it alone, you have to join other groups. So who are the groups? And which one are you drawn to? Because you can't do them all. So moving from there, uh, if you want to look at spirituality, uh, and uh, this is an interfaith, um, uh, uh, inter-ecumenical, uh, inter-everything, where from September the 1st to October the 4th, uh, we celebrate the season of creation. And I see that some of your bishops have uh, made calls, have encouraged you. Um, I see uh, many church leaders, uh, be they uh, Muslim or, or Buddhist or, or um, Hindu or whatever, are also engaged in this. And Pope Francis is uh, very much at the heart of this. And there have been all kinds of seminars and webinars and conferences, etc. Uh, the position paper uh, in paragraph three, three and six D uh, calls us to uh, be aware of the importance of Laudato Si. And of course, Laudato Si is at the heart of the season of creation. Now, I have another four slides uh, prepared, uh, which I am going to uh, go or not spend any time on because our time is 
uh, more or less uh, uh, running out, uh, but they're there for you to uh, look at if you want. Uh, they're more or less elaborating Laudato Si, but I think you already might know a lot about it um, wh when you might not have understood much about uh, UNFCCC. So I'm skipping that one and our common home and interconnectedness and um, uh, we're, uh, we forget that we are not gods, uh, that's uh, Pope Francis. And very interesting, uh, one thing here at the bottom, uh, talking about we're not gods. In practice, this means that powerful people take control. They control first others, uh, sorry, they control first others things, then other people, and then even the truth. And here in the United States, uh, we have a crisis at the moment around what is truth and who speaks the truth. And even when uh, scientists are speaking, they're told they're not right. So manipulation leads directly on to relativism. The truth itself is what uh, I want it to be. It's not an objective, it's what I want it to be. So um, I'm not saying any more about that. We did say it uh, in the very beginning and I just wanted to bring it in there. Um, uh, ecological conversion. We heard a lot about conversion and transformation uh, during ICA. Um, I want to highlight uh, Sustainable Goal 12 uh, at this particular moment. Uh, in Sustainable Goal 12, there are eight targets. And the eight targets are actually addressing everything we have talked about up to now. Efficient use of natural resources, reduce food waste. And today is the International Day, uh, the first day in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, awareness of food loss and waste production. And the Secretary General uh, spoke of food loss and waste as an ethical outrage. Now, this is the Secretary General at the United Nations uh, today, September 29th, uh, as it is still in the US. Uh, this was the International Day. Uh, so uh, just to be aware of that, uh, management of chemicals in the air, water, soil. Reduced waste generation. We didn't mention anything about the plastic bags. Transition, uh, transnational companies to adopt sustainable practices. Sustainable procurement practices. Sustainable development and lifestyles, all in harmony with nature. So sustainable goal 12, maybe that's where you want to look in terms of your advocacy and politi political awareness and activity. I do want to bring you back to the um, Beijing uh, platform for action and the 12 critical areas, asking you to be aware that uh, the platform uh, K is women and the environment. Uh, and we're celebrating Beijing 25 years later. And women and the environment was on the agenda then. Uh, the Rio conference was in 1992, which was the launch pad uh, in a sense uh, for much of this um, awareness. And then I thought I would try to uh, pull it all together uh, uh, around the sustainable development goals and women and girls are at the center, as I see it. And the foundation is 16 and 17, peace, justice, and strong institutions and partnership to implement the goals. Our position papers are very much uh, uh, in the inner circle around the woman, the gender equality five, no poverty, no hunger, access to health, access to education, decent work, and reduce inequalities. And then you have, as it were, the ecologically aware goals out around, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> 
13, climate action, life below the water, life on land, clean water and sanitation, uh, six. Uh, seven, clean energy. Nine, uh, industry, innovation and infrastructure. 11, about how we are in the cities, sustainable cities and communities. And 12, the sustainable consumption and production. So this is bringing all the goals uh, in around. Our lens is women and girls and what impacts them. But we are in the uh, environment, uh, in uh, the whole of nature and having respect for nature and trying to preserve it uh, to the best of our ability. And then I just want to conclude with, um, I did share uh, the inner diagram uh, saying that uh, globalization of finance and the financialization of the markets and corporate greed uh, I said they were the root cause of all root causes. And that our various uh, position papers were in some senses um, trying to address these issues and that this was the root cause. The globalization of finance, the financialization of the markets and corporate greed. And I place this now in the earth and with the seas around. And I have women, they're our lens. And we stand on rights. We, we said um, everything is rights-based. So every human has rights. And Mother Earth has rights. So that's the foundation. And, and that's the, the basis. Uh, so I, I, in this, as I say, then whether we focus on the girl child or on human trafficking or migration or prostitution or poverty or climate change, uh, they're all brought about because of greed, because of control, abuse, um, whether it's resources, the water, uh, whatever it is. And in the way we are now, we will have no earth. Climate change is now. So I think uh, I took uh, here uh, transformation. Uh, we heard a lot of it during ICA. Our stance can be found in paragraphs four and five of the position paper on ecology. Our first response, contemplate reality. The natural world and groups like women and indigenous communities affected by ecological violence. Contemplate reality. Our second response, admit our complicity. And I think that's very important. We are all contributing to the degradation of our world. And then the third response, reconciliation, calls us for a new consciousness, a new identity, new behaviors, centered on the kinship of all creation. I, I, I like that term very much, the kinship of all creation. So with the animals, with the fish, uh, with small things, with big things, uh, are, we, we are united, we're interrelated with them. And the implementation of human rights for all without discrimination. Uh, human rights is the basis uh, for moving forward. Uh, so it is um, uh, with that that I uh, conclude uh, this particular uh, presentation uh, in terms of, um, uh, of the paper on uh, e integral ecology. And um, I think, uh, Teresa, uh, we'll have some time maybe in the breakout rooms uh, for people to discuss and maybe come back and share with us uh, what uh, came up for them. Um, thank you so much, Winifred. Um, as I was uh, listening to Winifred, I'm so aware that um, all our other five position papers are related to a human person, whereas this sixth position paper is related to the environment that doesn't have a voice, uh, that is not able to, um, to launch a protest, uh, except for what we see as a result of uh, things that are happening in climate change. And we see that 
in terms of the changes that are happening in our environment. Uh, and I also realized that today Winifred has opened up our whole perspective on many new things that we have heard today. So I just have two questions for each one of us and I will put us into breakout rooms of maybe five people each and I will post here in the chat the Google form um, for you to uh, complete. It's just two questions. Okay, let me go back here. Yeah. It's just two questions that I have. The first is, what is the one takeaway that we have from this session? That's the first question. And the second question is, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> this one takeaway that we have, okay? So I'm going to put you into your breakout rooms now and we will have 15 minutes on this. And as you go into your breakout room, please appoint a host and a timekeeper. Okay, here we are. Can you see my screen? I'll make it bigger. We can see. No, we can see. Can see, huh? Okay. So mm -hmm. let's look at the responses. What is the one takeaway for me from this session? If we look at this, we will see um, the kinship and economic justice, ecological situations, what is important for the ecosystem in our day and life, the need to take proactive action at community level to further understand the effects of climate change, to take personal attention, to care for our mother earth, doing small things now, make garbage fertilizer, relaunch a program called War on Waste in Sydney, uh, Kinship of Economic Justice, Position Paper, Clause 6A. Many issues are happening that are interrelated. We're talking about political climate, the urgency to minimize the impact of emissions by the way of uh, life in the community and self. That means it starts from us as well. To know the Paris Agreement, to respond to the cry of the universe, um, a commitment towards the integration of the position paper in every aspect of mission. I am very happy to hear that. Uh, to have work on climate change, have to work on climate change because it has a ripple effect on migration. Climate change is an urgent need. Climate change affects everyone. All are responsible for climate change and changes. Reduce takeaway culture, replace with more eco-friendly packages. Okay, uh, climate change is now, it's an emergency, it is urgent. The session was informative, thought-provoking and made me face challenges. Um, not to be complacent, but to act now, to practice it personally and at home. Care for the earth, common home, how to reduce climate change promote eco-friendly uh, situations. So as we look at this, the one takeaway that has come across for almost all of us is that this whole realization that, you know, we are all part of this climate change and it's urgent. We need to do something. And it looks like for most of us here, it's this whole response to learning about climate change and, you know, to start work on it as well. Winifred, would you like to respond from what you see here? Hi, Winifred, are you with us? Uh, sorry, I was... Uh, um, yes. um, I, I think uh, the responses are marvellous. Uh, they're very uh, wide-ranging. And uh, what I think it indicates is that everybody is interested and we uh, only do our little piece uh, in terms of contributing unless we're called to engage in some kind of um, uh, political uh, engagement or uh, be a representative at the United Nations or follow climate change uh, specifically. Um, it's one of the things I regret um, in that like I haven't been able to uh, reach on uh, following climate change and the various uh, processes at the United Nations in the same way as I follow uh, women or migration or prostitution or human trafficking. Uh, but we would need more people uh, to be able to do that. Um, uh, but it certainly, it is the issue of our day. Yes. And I do want to say uh, that um, uh, in many circles, there's a feeling uh, that COVID-19 
has brought us to our senses and at some level our brought awareness to everybody and that COVID is in itself uh, a result of the degradation of the whole ecosystems. Uh, they're saying it might not have spread at all if um, bats were allowed to live in their natural habitat. Uh, so I have read things like that, uh, who knows? Uh, but uh, one thing is certain in terms of the way we were going, uh, that's not the way forward. And the Secretary General has been very clear on a call to build back differently and to build back better. Uh, mm. But of course, he's up against the, the powerful lobbies, uh, whether they are fossil fuels or multinationals or people who want to, uh, as I say, rape the earth, because there's very little uh, difference uh, between raping the earth and raping a woman or a girl or indeed a man. It's the same uh, mindset uh, that brings that about. Uh, so um, I, I think the awareness is created. Okay. And I think the more that we join with other groups mm. uh, in doing things, and I think we can link uh, in terms of environmental uh, cleanup and creating awareness around plastic and waste and the whole issue of food. Um, I think that's a huge issue, uh, the waste that happens. Um, how can we address that? Thank you, Winifred. Now, important thing is the next question that we have, what am I going to do about it? So we have got 23 responses from the groups here. Um, so let's go through them. Reduce my personal use by growing more of my own food. Oh, I like that. Uh, reduce use of chemicals, practice recycling, reduce the use of plastic, start with my own behave, behavior, my own home. Um, have started a program called Shepherd's Cove. Try to model the behavior of reduce and reuse. Integration and inclusive action enable the unit region to integrate, make a plan or project. Use this in every aspect of our mission, active advocacy and action, respect and love to nature and environment, sensitize community to this urgent pressing need, lead the walk and walk the talk, very nice. Change our lifestyle and food habits at the table. I take my initiative to reduce the ecological ignorance and take the motive, uh, motivation to encourage the environmental responsibility. Start, start ecologically, start from home, community and neighbor. Start to green our community surrounding. Respect and love for earth, creating awareness in surroundings. Consciously take every action for the betterment of saving common home. A holistic approach to tackle the issue. Um, need to evaluate how we are conducting the program across Good Shepherd, I agree. Uh, do more research, sign a petition, plant trees, save energy, water, planting trees, uh, making kitchen gardens, you know, large awareness that climate change is happening now. Practice conservation, recycling, reduce single weed use plastic, use clause 6A of position paper, um, action, protect our environment, Take small steps doing decompose, advocate in relation to women issues, take action for myself and the environment, join action groups, continue speaking about this, include advocacy about our common home. Um, yeah, you know, live first and then create awareness, life first, then create awareness economically, using the power, electricity, less using mode of travel. Well, COVID has um, reframed the whole notion of travel. Uh, will start to practice in daily life, etc. Making coal enzyme and using it for washing. Yeah, very nice. I think we have a lot to share from um, what we're already doing individually in different areas. It's really very nice to see your responses. I'm just going to open up um, for any reactions, maybe one or two reactions from the audience, and then maybe we will call it a day. Anyone who wants to share anything, just raise your hand or unmute, say your name, and then we'll put on speaker view so that we can see you. Any reflections or reaction to this session today? <clears throat> ah, Goretti, yes, go ahead. Please unmute and then uh, you can. Hello? Yes, Goretti, go ahead. Hello. 
Yes, we can hear you. I was uh, I I really love uh, when I know this is the meeting of uh, uh, ecology or uh, what we talk the in integration ecology in our position paper. I think uh, in my part we are trying to do not only to say something about this, but uh, and I saw the impact. It is really good when some it is also come out when we plan ourselves even it is not in the big land but using all what we have either the plastic bag or something else you know and even a small part in our land and also doing the like eco enzyme uh maybe some of you also know about those things and other things maybe even uh, the garbage the wet garbage in our home but uh, I think this is simple action that we can do. But if we can do it together as a good shepherd, I think it will be different. When we're talking about the heat, you know, I think this is also part of our responsibility to say it. We are not just seeing the information about that, about the, the earth, about the, uh, uh, what's that, the, the heat that are uh, coming up all, always, you know, that when we are aware about 75% of our garbage is the wet garbage, it means we are invited to do something with our garbage. It is our responsibility, actually, to do something about that. And mm -hmm. if it is really important for us, I think we would like to do it all together. It's not only one person doing, doing that and other person only said, oh, yeah, yes, it is good. It is fairly easy to say that, but what is the changing? And I remember when before, uh, Winifred was asking, how about your government? It is our government. I think I saw Indonesia with 200 million people in Indonesia. I saw the government trying to do a lot of things, a lot of effort, a lot of skilled person to go to the uh, villages to do all those things, you know, to give some awareness, to plan, uh, to... Um, but train with the skill to use all the garbage or even doing all the uh, using uh, many things more, not yet with the plastic. But even if the government doing all those things, the SDGs will not come if each of us not doing something. Thank you. Thank so you, Goretti. Yes. Something. Thank you. Thank you for saying that Thank it you. starts from each one of us. Each one yeah. of us, yes. And if we look in the yeah. chat group here, uh, there are many mm -hmm. responses that have said, you know, it starts from us, do something together. Important to put our yeah. act together. Um, I think uh, Peter and Caroline both raised their hands. Uh, Caroline, would you like to say something first and then we'll go to Peter. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say um, to Winifred, you're doing an exceptional job, your little team at the UN. And you can't do everything. And as Goretti was saying, this is something that has to come as much from us on the ground and the grassroots as it does for anything that you can do at the UN. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be prepared to be well and truly on that journey with you. And the congregation needs to also be on that journey. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. And I'm reminded as Caroline shares that for some units, uh, it is in our province direction statements uh, to actually engage on integral ecology. So that is a very good starting point for each of us to take responsibility for, um, for the earth. Yes, uh, Peter. Peter, you raised your hands, yes. Before Peter starts, yes. I, want to, I want to say to Caroline that the New Zealand Prime Minister pledge to reach 100% of renewable energy across the nation by 2030. Uh, that's New Zealand. It was announced today at the United Nations as her commitment uh, in terms of uh, a, a nation taking on an action. Uh, so it would be good if everybody can see what their country is doing. Okay, sorry, Teresa, and sorry, Yes, teacher. no worries. And Jacinta no worries, Arden is uh, really a fine example of a prime minister for a country. Yes, uh, know, Pete, yes, yes, Jacinta Arden. Yes, Peter, please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to take forward what uh, Goretti shared and what many have put in the chat. Uh, it's a suggestion that uh, as Asia-Pacific, we should have a one week 
fully dedicated to ecology all our uh, communities and all throughout asia pacific we should have that one week various actions like we are having international girl child day i think we should have one week at least maybe in june world uh, environment day that time thank you peter um we will we will put you in the committee next year uh, <laughs> to uh, to be part of this and you will be joined by many other people yes we will remember that for next year maybe one last reaction and then we'll ask uh winifred to close off uh, just raise your hands if you want to say something unmute and you know say your name because i can't see you from my screen you need to unmute and say your name and say your reaction anyone uh hi can i speak sashi here yes sashi go ahead uh i just uh I, I don't have the patience to type, so I just decided to voice out. And I really think that just like we've had uh, the uh, opportunity to collaborate uh, with the on the position paper of the girl child, with every program participant right across in the social service as well as in education, it's most important that we continue the same way uh, for integral ecology as well, and mm -hmm. not just one, but across all the position papers. Because it is not, we, we, we cannot operate in silos when we want to make such a, an impactful uh, difference. So I think I really believe that it is not only in the unit or in the local level, but also in the regional as well as in the congregational level. We could take could this do. as a small example. That's all. Thank you so I, much. I totally agree. So Peter, Sashi will be joining you in the committee. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. She's to <laughs> Together with all of us, yes. yes and because yes. Um, integral ecology is such a big topic, you know, it could even run the whole year before we will actually is. see a difference. Yes, yes. It could be something that everyone could do, you know. Yeah, so with that, I just want to ask Winifred to uh, give us some last closing words. Um, yeah. Well, um, uh, last closing words. Uh, <laughs> it has been... Uh, it has been uh, really a privilege and a great gift to me uh, to be part of uh, sharing the position papers uh, with all of you. And I really and truly appreciate your commitment, uh, the numbers in which you came on every night, uh, the level of your participation and engagement. And I think it has been um, highlighted uh, that the enthusiasm hasn't lessened as the weeks and months have gone on, but has actually, um, um, what I say, snowballed and uh, grown bigger uh, with uh, Peter and uh, Sashi and I think Goretti uh, forming the committee uh, in terms of uh, rolling out uh, ecology. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I think um, it, it has been tremendous. I think it has certainly brought life to me and it has linked uh, my work uh, very specifically uh, with uh, what all of that you're doing. Um, I do have some insights as to uh, what you do in the various countries because when I was young, I had the opportunity to visit. Uh, but uh, to see that uh, um, and to know that you are working at the grassroots uh, with the p people who are excluded, who are outside the political, and even saying, uh, hearing the cry of the earth and noticing that the earth might have no voice uh, and that it's our voice and our moment. Um, I think um, uh, great um, um, credit has to be given to uh, Claire Nolan, who uh, originally launched uh, these position papers. Uh, I think they uh, were back in 2008. Um, I think the topics were well chosen. I, I think they uh, form um, a, a very uh, lovely picture against which we can uh, implement and evaluate. And uh, I think um, uh, Sashi mentioned not to be working in silos, uh, silos either in terms of issues or silos in terms of uh, being a specific country, uh, but we are all together in congregation. Uh, we are all together in Asia Pacific region and we want uh, a, um, a cleaner world. Uh, we want a green world. Uh, we want a world where uh, there is kinship with all living uh, things. 
and we want human rights uh, to be that foundation and we are willing to commit our lives and indeed you commit your life every day uh, to making that happen. So um, uh, what can I say? Thank you very much. I will always remember uh, this and look what COVID did and look what technology has done. Uh, so, and uh, to Teresa Simmons and uh, Veronique, who's not uh, uh, at the uh, technology end this evening, uh, like I think they have been tremendous leaders uh, if, in getting the uh, network up and functioning, uh, keeping everybody co in communication, sending out links, making sure uh, that we sign on, reminding us, uh, sending updates, getting everything uh, put together, getting it sent out. Uh, like who knows what goes on in the background. Uh, so to Teresa and uh, Veronique, I would say uh, thank you very much. It was a huge pleasure uh, to work with you. And I hope it's not the end, uh, but uh, we'll take a little break. Now. <laughs> uh, no, Winifred, you'll be back with us on the 20th of October, no? Oh, yes. For the application, yes, yes. yes. Oh, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> um, yes. We have a lot of things. Yes, uh, but, we, yes. Uh, just also to say that um, uh, what we did the first time uh, in terms of migration uh, on October uh, the 13th, I am facilitating in terms of what uh, migration looks like in America uh, for the Americas uh, in terms of Canada and uh, the different provinces here. And that was all because it sparked in uh, Asia Pacific. So uh, again, uh, thank you very much. Um, my pleasure. My prayer is always with you. Uh, our zeal uh, uh, always keeps us united and we belong to every country. Yes. You know. Thank you. Thank you, Winifred. Thank you so much.